Going to the game, I'm going to be playing Volibear Jungle and show you his maximum potential. In this matchup, we're currently up against Blue Kane, and in a Volibear versus Blue Kane, this is a huge advantage for Volibear when it comes to the early game and in team fights. The reason why is because we have tower diving potential and they're quite durable, helping us deal damage and soak for our team at the same time. The only advantage that Blue Kane has is possibly getting a snowball, getting pickoffs in the side lane since our lineup is quite squishy. The clear that I'm doing is a red side clear where I go for my Krugs, Red, Rafters, and Flex depending on what happens on the map. But the biggest reason why I'm starting at the bot side is because I would always want to path towards the easiest lane to gank. If you look at the lanes, bot lane is quite hard with Samira Thresh. Mid lane is an advantage for us but it's hard to tower dive this Fizz due to the fact that he has 3rd skill, 1st skill, flash, etc. So, if you look at the top side, this is the easiest lane to gank. Both fighting each other, Gwen and Yone. If Gwen gets an advantage in the lane and then we get our ultimate, it should be an easy tower dive plus kill for our team. Kane goes in, flashes, tries to punish the Kai'Sa. Activate my first kill, and as soon as their fizz flashes, we follow through with our own flash and get the punish. Kane is still quite healthy, and it's hard to chase him down, so I just clear the wave, help the Kaisa get a cleaner call, but she doesn't want to go back yet. I think she wants to get one more wave, and decides to go back in the end. So with the fizz down, we get first blood. Unfortunate, our bot lane dies, but it's okay. With this information, I know that Yone will be alone since Kane is now at the bottom side. With Kai'Sa getting a lead and their jungler at the bot side, this is a perfect opportunity to go for a top lane dive or a normal gank. With Gwen going back, the next thing that I want to do is to get my level 5 as soon as possible so that we could prepare for any ganks. Uh, Volibear's ultimate is Omega Broken when tower diving because it not only disables the tower, it gives you additional HP, and even damages the opponent. With the Gromp finishing, I'm thinking about going back or waiting at the top side. I decide to wait at the top side since Gwen is doing a good job uh, holding the lane. We place a controller to check if there's any ward and with Yone, face checking, no idea that we're there. Nice exhaust, get a stun off. I don't even need to use my ultimate since their Yone has no more escape abilities since he already used his flash and he's not yet level 5. Perfect gang so far. Gwen getting some plates. We yoink Kane's uh, Krugs rather. But seeing that they're possibly going for the top side, I don't want to play too greedy. So I just take this Krugs and then immediately go back to our base. I could have waited for Yone to come back since I have ultimate. But I decided not to since their mid jungle is missing. And I don't want to throw a lead. Once we go back to base, our bot camp spawned and now we're going to get them. Take note that I still have ultimate since I saved it earlier. So the opportunity to go for a tower dive is always open. We take the Krugs. Red buff is spawning. If nothing happens, I will just full clear my camps. But with bot lane, I see that Thresh is playing a bit aggressive. So I'm positioning myself to go for a gank. I saw also Fizz going bot side, so it's gonna be a bit risky. Nautilus playing very greedy, hooking in, trying to get the Samira. I have my ultimate now to deal some damage. Nautilus with the snare. We miss our first kill, but we still get the kill with our second skill. Samira goes in with the ultimate. Nice hook by the Nautilus, cancelling it. I flash away, but I thought it was Kai'Sa, but unfortunately it was their jungler. But overall, it should be fine. Kai'Sa arrives, gets some counter kills. 3 for 3 trade so far. Kane is playing super greedy. Going inside the Kai'Sa. Getting a bit baited. I think he just wanted the blue side. Blue Kane stacks. But overall, we're able to win the trade. Getting a 4 for 3. Not the best, but we take the small wins that we can get. And if you look at our lineup, we have 3 scaling champions. Which are Kai'Sa, Ezreal, and Gwen. So once we get them ahead, this should be an easy game. With objective spawning in 30 seconds, instead of starting at the bot side, I go to the top side, clear towards the bot lane. That way, it's gonna be perfect timing and we will be near the objective so that we could start it immediately or contest if they are there. 
10 seconds to spawn. The only thing that I'm worried about is that Gwen has no priority. So there's a chance that their Yone might appear. We position ourselves at the Dragon since it's already spawning. Nautilus goes in for the support. So we follow up. We want to kill the Thresh as soon as possible in order to get the numbers advantage. Once we get the kill, Fizz gets an ulti but we're still quite healthy. Getting a lot of life steal with the Sunder and we're able to clean up. Sunder with Volibear is broken if they have no anti-healing because of the fact that you get double life steal with the Sunder passive as well as the second skill. When you use your second skill, you also get the Sheen proc which would increase your damage even more. Topside Gwen is able to get a 1 for 1 trade which is perfect for us since they're not able to trade objectives. Herald is still up for the taking but since it's missing, I'm double thinking whether we should start this immediately or go for the reset. Ultimately, I decide to go for the reset since it's take, gonna take too long and give them time to get items. This is really safe since we're able to complete armor boots and this would make us very tanky against their AD composition. With my team able to reset, get their HP and mana back, I'm thinking about starting the Rift Herald. And with Samira, Thresh showing bot, it's gonna be a 2v2. Not looking good since Ezreal was caught out of position. Yone goes in with the third skill. I can't help bot side. Kaisa gets caught by the Kane plus Fizz, but I'm there to help with the armor boots plus Sunder. We get a ton of life steal. Third skill, we chunk Yone quite a bit with our empowered second skill. And seeing that they're low, Gwen with full HP, we could start this objective. Bot lane is still fighting, they're having a 2v2. I just want to pull this since Kane can easily get his HP back by just spamming a third skill. Also gives him quite a bit of vision. So it's gonna be very risky. Yone goes in, very nice engage. But with all of the seconds, the lifesteal plus shielding that we have, we're able to tank the damage and secure the Herald. This is quite big. Since we have a shutdown gold and we do not we do not want to die. Getting Herald and plate still up. We should be getting the first tower. Just want to scare them a bit. Once we get it, immediately go back to our camps and farm our items. Ezreal is able to free farm bot side. Gwen is able to respawn and this is looking good. Especially since we are a late game composition. The... Most important thing probably here is the Yone. If he's able to get more items and do the same engage compared to last time, then it would be a bit hard for us. Since Yone ult plus Samira ult would be a very very deadly combo. While waiting for everyone to come back, I just want to farm my camps and think of the next lane that I could go for. We secure the red buff, take rugs. So the next tower that I'm gonna go for is this bot lane since we're already there. Kane goes in with his own ultimate trying to catch our carries but Kai'Sa going in I don't know what's happening I'm just basing it on the minimap but as soon as we're there I'm deciding whether I should go for the engage but ultimately want to push this bot lane. Kai'Sa can cover mid lane, Gwen Yone both a farm lane. I place a control ward so that if anyone face checks they would not know that I'm there. Perfect timing. Samira goes in for the face check. This is there but I know that she wouldn't be able to do anything. Get her with my own ultimate. And not only get a kill. We're also able to get the bot tower. Top side. Gwen and Kaisa getting a 2v3 outplay. Winning the team fight. Even though the opponents have numbers advantage. And things are looking really good here. The next item that I'm going for is Rift Maker. And... If you remember what, oh nice second skill by Kane getting a double kill and helping him get ahead. Their Kane is 6-2 which is really good as uh, an assassin. Because if you want to play an assassin, you always want to be ahead in gold. Back to where I left off. The, the reason why I went for Riftmaker second item is because not only do you get more lifesteal, but you even get more damage. Making you a possible carry champion. Yone doesn't face check, poke him a bit, force the flash and that's good enough for us because of the fact that the objective is gonna spawn in 10 seconds and I do not want to use too much resources in order to catch the Yone. We position ourselves there with the objective in 5 seconds. 
I play it a bit safe first, you know, for my camp since it's not yet up. But once it's up, we could go for a possible team fight. I don't want to finish this objective unless we have the advantage. So what I do is get the objective, look for wards, remove their wards, and I can use this in order to bait the opponents to go close. And then we could go for a possible turn. I'm just waiting for someone to get a stun. And seeing that the left side, nice Zonya by the Kai'Sa. Dodging the Fizz and Yone ultimate. Yone makes a big misplay. We punish him. Kane goes in with his own ultimate. But with Nautilus ultimate connecting, we're able to get a kill onto the jungle. And with our jungler down, this should be a free dragon for us to take. After taking this objective, we go back to our camps and start farming again. Your second item would change depending on the what's happening in the game. So in this game, I'm quite ahead, currently 9-1. So I had to go for a bit more damage-oriented build. But if I was behind, for example, I was 0-2 or I'm not able to get much farm, I would just go for a more standard tanky build. For example, the... Warmogs or even Black Cleaver so that I would get more HP. Next item I go for is Zonyas because at this point, even though I deal a lot of damage, I'm a bit squishy. Top side, Gwen and Fizz are both fighting. Nice backup by our teammates. And we get a punish onto their Baron Lena. We go back to our camps and continue our clear. You don't want to forget that you always need to farm your camps, especially when it comes to the later stages, since they give a lot of gold. Top lane, another fight and choose. Kane getting a kill onto the Ezreal yet again. Currently at 3v2, but with the third skill plus ultimate, we're able to get a lot of lifesteal, get a stun onto the Kane, knowing that he has no more ultimate. Yone does a good job with his ulti, but look at all of the lifesteal that we're having. Second skill, 300 damage, and Driftmaker procs. They can't kill us. We're just too tanky, even though we don't have tank items. Just the lifesteal is enough. And with four of their members down, this should be a free Baron for us to take. Kaisa is already on the way to help us. I'm pinging Gwen to help me at the Baron. No need to be super greedy. Just take this Baron and then just go out. Giving us a huge lead in this game. We have a late game scaling comp, and with a late game scaling comp, if we're able to get ahead, this game should be as good as done. Just want to farm my camps before going back, since a lot of them are up. And with that, we go back by our Twin Guard. At this point, you know what? We already deal a lot of damage. Now is the time to get more durability, and Twin Guard is the perfect item, because not only does this help us last longer in a fight, it also helps us get stronger as a team fight goes on. Really good synergy with Driftmaker since both items would want you to last longer in a team fight. Having Baron buff, still a bit hard. We go for the Samir. Look at that damage. Just ultimate second skill, first skill. Already almost at no HP. If I had flash, Samira was dead. We just go for the tower. Chunk Fizz a bit. We're just chunking everyone. One hit on the Fizz. Then third skill for the shield. We have a life. We have a lot of life steal. Thresh randomly goes in. Second skill, auto attack. Get another kill. Wind guard proking, giving us more armor as well as tenacity. And with all of their members out of position, they don't know what to do. Kane is the only one up. We go in, second skill, first skill, and we get the ace. The nexus is now exposed. We just go straight and end the game. Pretty clean game, we're able to help our lane snowball and we're able to show you the potential damage of this champion. Not only becoming tanky, but having a lot of damage as well. 100% Volibear at Challenger, props to my teammates with all of the follow-up that they have been doing. They did well, we'll take it. 14, 1 and 4, 20k damage, 7.6k damage taken. We're literally carrying and tanking at the same time. And with that, that's how you could use Volibear and abuse this champion. That is it for me, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Ciao, ciao.